Welcome to What's the Risk, hosted by myself, Daniel Crow, and Peter Mansell, founder of Mansell Financial Group, a financial advice business he founded in 1980. This is a simple video series we hope investors can use to better understand index and portfolio performance, along with addressing some investment questions and dilemmas. Uh, this episode is on a little bit of a strange expectation. Your investment philosophy book we wrote, it's available on Amazon if you'd like to pick it up. Disclaimer. Please pause and read. Suffice to say, our intent is educational, not rendering financial advice. These are simple concepts. We just like investors to better understand performance in the short and long term and some financial uh, questions. This one's around a inquiry we have received, similar inquiries, and we receive all types of inquiries, and we treat them all with the greatest deal of respect. Occasionally, there are some interesting ideas and expectations, and this is one that we've received in recent months. Essentially, I expect the advisor I deal with to have a strong net worth to validate that they know what they are talking about and walk the talk based on experience. I guess there's nothing wrong with having a particular view, but some talking points around this. I don't think the advisor is going to be handing over their details to prove their credentials. But on saying that, the advice business and the AFSL, you can make some commentary around this, Peter, they will know the position or should know the position of the advisors that they are licensing. Certainly. The AFSL or licensee business that I head up, as well as, you know, heading up our own, what I call retail advice business, we ensure that we understand the financial position of every advisor before we let them into the group. Um, so we want to make sure that the people that are going to give advice under our license actually do portray the beliefs within their own lives that they espouse to clients. And just thinking back to the previous slide, if I saw my advisor turn up in a Lamborghini, <laughs> um, having just having just driven away from his private plane, then I might want to ask myself the question, how did he become that affluent? You know, I've seen the, the flip side of this argument where advisors were criticised from the perspective of, why is it the advisor's driving, you know, the Lamborghini? Why isn't his client driving the Lamborghini if, if he's so good at what he does? So I think that it's a somewhat extreme view. I think it's fair for someone to want to understand that the advisor will actually implement within their own lives the advice that they will give. From my own perspective, I remember it heard many years ago that if you won't buy an investment, why would you recommend that investment to someone else? And I think that's absolutely fair. I think that it's also fair to understand that advisors, if they are successful over a long period of time, will gradually become far more affluent. When I started in this business back in 1980, everything I owned fit you know, inside a motor car and a bedroom. That was it. That's not the case today. But that's 45 years later. I'd be quite happy to have this conversation with a prospect, but at the end of the day, I don't think it's valid for an advisor to have to prove what assets they've got to prove that they're actually good at what they do. And that goes for every profession. A young surgeon that's just finished their registration and the like might be an extremely capable surgeon. What a prospective client should be looking for is evidence of the advisor's beliefs and making sure that they then do their own homework to validate anything and everything the advisor says. Yeah, as you point out there, financial advice is a knowledge-based profession and a person could use to optimise their position over the short and long term, but it's never going to be an overnight path to riches for either the client or the advisor. It's about um, doing the right things consistently over the long term. And that's where the advisor is probably going to come in and prove the most benefit because you're going to be tested, you're going to have issues in your own life, and it's about the same things and repeating the same behaviours that's going to get you on the path to where you want to be. Absolutely. Discipline over the long haul will gradually make you financially affluent. Trying to get rich in a hurry almost always leads to ruin. And on that last slide where you made the reference about the Lamborghini, remember... It was only not that long ago we had uh, the Melissa Caddick story where she was living a very affluent, uh, had a very affluent appearance, but underneath there was some very concerning things that were going on. Pretty, pretty disastrous things going on, absolutely. Yeah. When it comes down to maybe having a younger advisor or something, someone like that who maybe not have, doesn't have a strong net worth, but the other thing is to remember, advice is often going to be a team-based approach. So you might be dealing with one advisor, but in the background, how many advisors do we have here now? 
We have eight in our firm and we routinely discuss complex client issues, you know, to ensure that all of our best thinking is brought to bear to help that client. Across our national business, we've got another 50 plus advisors that we can talk to to get opinions on similar situations, potential outcomes and so forth. And having that collaborative, that collegiate approach and a willingness to share that knowledge is tremendously advantageous for every one of the advisors but especially the younger ones that may not have seen circumstances before. In 45 years, I've seen a lot more than someone that's been an advisor for five years. So, you know, I might be able to help them with knowledge, experience, you know, circumstance evaluation that will help them. And we do. Uh, So, yeah, I think that it's important for the client to understand what sort of support the advisor's got to be able to make sure that they get best of advice available to them. Going back to the client themselves, asking these type of questions is fair enough, as you say, but it's also a little bit of a behavioural issue because you're coming in with preconceived ideas. It's probably best to just arrive with a blank slate and then make your judgment. That goes for both the client and the advisor. Some clients or prospective clients, uh, an advisor is just not going to be be a good fit to work with. Personality clashes might might prevail. It just might not be the right fit. And it goes both ways. I think that for a lot of people... Having an advisor that's a bit younger than them actually makes a lot of sense um, because that advisor is still likely to be around, certainly from a longevity point of view, at the point in the life where most clients want to delegate more and more of that sort of decision making to a trusted professional. Uh, So I I think that there's not a lot wrong with having an advisor that's a few years younger than you um, because you want them to be around. The other point too, from the the client perspective, it is also probably understandable in some ways because just to have some concerns about whether their advisor is capable and what what their thinking is because the legacy of poor advice culture has some people um, knowing they need help but they're still very wary about what an advisor is going to do with all their capabilities or like because you you still see things come up about commissions and how how, how long ago has that gone out of the industry or or specifically look i can i can speak about it from our own business but but we haven't accepted commissions, you know, for managing, you know, investments for people for 25 plus years. That's very much a thing of the past. That poor advice culture that revolved around sales, I think the average consumer can take it as read that it just doesn't exist anymore. And the other other point, I guess, if you arrive ready for a knife fight instead of a conversation, what are you going to achieve? Because advice generally is a conversation. You've got to get to know, your advisor has to get to know you and what your goals are and what your position is and where you want to be to put something in place that's going to help you. It's absolutely critical that a, that a good advice relationship's based on absolutely clear understanding of what clients' objectives are, what their tolerances are, what really makes them tick how they want to live their life. If we've got genuine clarity about what's important to people, they can be assured of getting good advice. And sources and descriptions of data, well, that's five decades of experience that you've had, Peter, that we could probably speak from um, from what you've just uh, talked about. Absolutely. Yeah, once upon a time I had hair and less lines. Um, now <laughs> I've got experience. Yeah. All right. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.